Yep. Hey y'all, we're back at Ask a Realtor. We had two weeks off and this week's a little bit different. Um, Lee had a closing and could not be here and Courtney is showing a property. Spring buying season, that's the way it goes. But we are glad to welcome uh, Connie Crispin, uh, the owner of Carbon Search and Settlement. One of only two um, title, ser title search companies closing. Yeah, what do you call your company? Title insurance companies. Title insurance companies. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here in the county. Um, and Connie is located right here in Lehighton. So Connie, without further ado, you ready for some questions? Absolutely. All mm -hmm. right. First one, what is title insurance? Title insurance... When a, purchase, when a buyer is purchasing a property, they're going to want to guarantee that the property they're purchasing is free and clear of any mortgages, judgments, any real estate taxes that may not have been paid, utilities, water, sewer, trash. We do that. We do a search on the property to see what liens are against the property, what restrictions, what right-of-ways, um, mineral rights, anything that's been reserved to other people in the chain of title. We get them to the closing table, taking care of any outstanding liabilities that the seller has. We don't want that buyer to assume any debt from that seller. So the title insurance gives them a guarantee that what we have done will provide them assurance that if they would go to sell the property or refinance, they wouldn't have any title issues, any, anything that would make the property not marketable. Important job. Important job. And you do it well. Um, so what sorts of things do you find when you do a title search? Most common is your mortgages. You're going to find what liens the seller took out. Sometimes there's two, three mortgages. Lines of credits are always tricky because you have to make sure those get closed out. Uh, a lot of times I'll have a seller that may have had a line of credit. They paid it off, but unless you file the proper documents to close that out, that remains open. And sometimes they'll be 10, 15 years old. And with banks selling out to other banks, sometimes it takes a while to track down who the original servicer was to, to get that lien taken care of. Uh, we find restrictions. Um, you'll find uh, some of the developers will, will put restrictions on as far as uh, can you have a detached garage, uh, undetached garage, uh, above ground pool. Uh, some of them even have what color the houses can be. So as you do the search, you'll find the different restrictions or, or reservations that each owner has had. We go back 30, we go back 60 years. So every owner for the last 60 years, we, we research. Um, when you find divorces, that's always uh, another title issue that can come up to make sure that if there's supposed to be out any payouts for one spouse or the other, even though the property was transferred, there could still be money due to another spouse when you do the search. Uh, you find estates when you find someone has passed away. You have to make sure inheritance tax is paid. The, the title search is the most involved part of the title insurance. It's, it's the foundation. If you do the search, you uncover anything that has happened over the last 60 years, and then you move forward from there. Awesome. Um, what is the difference? It's my understanding that there are two types of policies a buyer can get, a lender's policy and an owner's policy. Um, what's the difference between the two of them? An owner's policy, like it is mentioned, is just for the owner. If you purchase an owner, well, you have to purchase an owner's policy equivalent to what the purchase price is or the appraised value. Uh, you can't buy a, a house for 20000 and say, I want to get title insurance for 50000 We can only issue title insurance for the value of the property. Uh, lender's title insurance, we can give the lender a policy for the amount that they're lending on the property. So if you purchase a house for 100000 I would give you an owner's policy for 100000 The lender's giving you 80000 The lender would then get a policy, lender's policy, for the 80000 it has to match the amount of liability that you have in the property. So basically the two kinds of policies are to cover two different entities. Correct. If a lender's policy is only on, you have no coverage. It's just the lender. A lender will not 
give money to any buyer unless they get a lender's policy. How much does title insurance cost? The state sets our title insurance rates. Um, we get raises, this uh, last rate chart was May of 2016. So it's been two years since they've changed any of the premiums. The state determines per thousand what the title insurance is. 30,000 and less is a flat rate of 569, and then it goes up in increments per thousand. And I looked up a little earlier, I cheated. Uh, average house in Carmen County might be selling for 150,000. If you're buying a house for 150,000, you're gonna be paying about $1,300 in title insurance. All right, we're doing good. Hello to our viewers, all two of you. Um, remember, if you have any questions, you can win a gas card. Okay, do buyers have to pay title insurance up front? You're doing really good, by the way, Connie. Thank you. Yes, very professional. Yes, we're glad we asked you to come on. Thank you. Do they have to pay for title insurance up front? No. We, we do the work and then you get billed after. We don't pay until we get you to closing. So at the closing table, when the buyer and the seller show up, we pay off anything that's due on the settlement sheet. On that settlement sheet or that closing disclosure are the costs for the recording, transfer tax, title insurance, tax prorations. Everything is collected at one time and you just bring one check to closing and it takes care of everything. We disperse all the fun. we disperse all the funds. So as a buyer purchases title insurance and they come to the closing table, they don't have to bring their checkbook and write checks out for everything. They just write one check, certified check, to us, and then we disperse everything. We pay the seller after all the items, utilities, mortgages, judgments. After everything is paid, then the seller walks out with a check. And the buyer gets to choose the title company. Um, so that's a good point to know. How long does title insurance last? If you have an owner's policy and I'm insuring you as the owner, as long as you are the owner, your title insurance is in effect. If you sell the property, the new owner would have to obtain their own policy. You can't assign it or assume it. The new owner would have to give me a call and we do the search again, check out anything that the current owner has done to the property or with the property and then they would get a, a title insurance policy, which is basically a guarantee that the title is marketable. So nowadays, um, as soon as a buyer goes under contract, um, in the first few days they have to apply for their mortgage if they're getting a mortgage. And lately, um, the sooner title insurance um, is ordered, the better, because sometimes unexpected things show up. Um, do you have any stories you can share, Connie, of? an unexpected thing that a buyer found out when they ordered title insurance? We had one within the last couple months. A, a, a gentleman was buying a, uh, a large piece of land, hunting land, he wanted to do hunting, and there was a manufactured home on a foundation. And manufactured homes carry a motor vehicle title to them. The motor vehicle title to the modular home was never transferred to the seller. So the seller actually just owned the land and the foundation. He did not own the manufactured home because he didn't have a title to it. Um, we were able to go back to that seller's title company, research through the paperwork. The former two owners back still had the motor vehicle title. It was still titled in their name. They were able to take it to a notary, have it transferred to the seller, and then into my owner. Uh, there was financing on it, so this buyer almost lost the whole transaction because he couldn't obtain the financing because he didn't have ownership to the trailer. Um, title issues are, are, are they're very expensive. They take a lot of time to try to solve. Anybody that would want to purchase a property without getting title insurance to know that their property is, is marketable and the guarantee that there's nothing against it I, I can't imagine making an investment without making sure you had some kind of guarantee. And, and most realtors will advise their clients that way, that um, it's definitely something you want to do. Yes. Um, and we point out, if, if you're um, getting a mortgage, it's going to be required, the bank's going to require title insurance. If you're buying something cash um, or, or personal financing uh, or lender or seller financing, it won't be required unless but it always, 
always something that you, you want to do. I'm stuttering today, Connie. So, um... I actually have another story that I was just thinking about as we were talking about these wings. I had a lady that came into the office and she was buying a home. It was $100,000 and she gave the seller a check for $100,000. <laughs> and then she came into my office and asked me how she proceeds. And we did find a mortgage against the property. And thank goodness the seller gave the $100,000 back to the buyer. And so we were able to do the search, pay off anything that was against it. But there's some people that, that just, they're, they're going Sorry. back to the days where you could just do a handshake and say, here, the property is yours. And you, you, you can't. <laughs> we have a question um, from Daniela. Hey, Daniela. Um, she said, if somebody's buying a property and it's in Act 319, also known as Clean and Green, and they want to subdivide it, what was her question? I believe it was, um, how much would that cost? Was the question. Um, do you want to take a stab at it? Sure. The Act 319, the Clean and Green, there's certain provisions within the Clean and Green that you have to have 10 acres. If you take that 10 acres, if you have a 20 acre track and you want to separate 10 acres and 10 acres, it can stay in the clean and green. If you want to take that 20 acres and make any parcels that are less than 10 acres, it has to be removed, which is a violation of the Act 319. So rollback taxes would be due from the seller seven years. They roll back seven years and they take the difference of what the discount was that you got from enrolling the property into the act and the penalties and that's assessed to the seller. Once the property, the deed gets recorded, the assessment office will start calculating what the rollback taxes are. I as a title company would of course hold money from the seller. I would not release the full proceeds to the seller without holding back an allocated amount to take care of whatever those back taxes would be. Any of course taxes that don't get paid at closing would revert to my buyer and we don't ever want my buyer to have any back taxes against them. So rollback taxes would be escrowed at closing from the seller's money to take care of that. Connie, Connie you seem really knowledgeable. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this 30 years. I've had my own business for 18 years. She doesn't look old enough to be doing this for 30 years. Thank but you, Aggie. I gotta tell you, she's awesome. Um, for any of you who haven't closed on a house yet, when you go to closing, the title agent has a stack of papers about this big. Um, and she thoroughly explains all of them and she doesn't get them out of order. Um, very, very efficient and that's important and organized when you're choosing a title agent. Um, we answered our question. 514, we have a minute for commercials. So we did the commercial for Carbon Search and Settlement, one of two agencies in, in Carbon County. She does a great job located in a beautiful Victorian house. The office is beautiful. If you go to a pretty office for closing, um, choose Connie. And then we also want to uh, talk to all you sellers. Um, we're looking for listings because our listings are selling a little too fast and we're running out of them. I guess that's not a bad problem to have. Um, if we offer a discount on commissions, if you're a first responder of any type, um, a pastor, uh, active duty military, or a veteran. Um, is that it? Oh, oh, we're starting something new. I should say it without, without Courtney. Okay, anyway, we're going to be doing something called um, Conquer Carbon. And we're going to visit uh, places, things to do, businesses. Um, we're just going to plant a flag and, and visit these places and do a quick video so that anyone looking to get to know Carbon County or things to do here will have a place to see it. Thanks all for tuning in. Have a good day and happy spring.